Yeah. Right, welcome to the State Control Centre for the uh, briefing on the uh, rain uh, and storm event we've had over the last couple of days here in Victoria. I'm joined by Michael Efron from the Bureau of Meteorology, who's here with me, and T Tim Weebush, who's the Chief Officer of the State Emergency Service. And we've also got Karen and Alex from Expression Australia who are assisting us. I'll give a brief overview and then I'll hand over to Michael who will give an overview, then answer any questions you have relating to, to the Bureau of Meteorology. And then after that, Tim Weebush will speak about uh, uh, SES involvement and some of the data relating to their support to the flood activity and the storm activity. Uh, as you'll be aware, a significant amount of rain and storms have occurred right across Victoria over the, over the last 24 hours. There's been record amount of rain in various areas, which we touched on a little bit later, and there was also uh, over three months' rain recorded in Heathcote in a 24-hour period. This resulted in flash flooding at numerous locations, particularly overnight just north of Bendigo. There have been over 38 rescues, swift water rescues and rescues from flood water, uh, from people in their homes and driving through flood water and, and some of those others that are caught up in the flash floods. A special thank you to the police and emergency service personnel, including SES, that assisted with those rescues because they're quite dangerous and assisted with um, helping people through those flood waters. Numerous houses across those areas have been impacted by the rains and the storms, and relief centres are now open at Bendigo, Seymour, Yay, and Echuca is opening at the moment for the risk of flooding at Rochester. There have been widespread road closures across the state as well, so again we remind people to take care around flooded rivers and creeks and waterways, and please do not drive through flood water. We can expect to see more rain across the state. It's still raining now and will continue to do so as it moves across to the east and the northeast of the state. There are major flood warnings currently for Rochester and Seymour, and flooding at Shepparton and Wangaratta is expected midweek. If you are in a flood impacted area or a flood prone area, please have a flood plan. Know what you're going to do with those rains continue to occur, monitor the Vic Emergency app and listen to local broadcasters. If you are leaving, leave early. If you decide that you are staying at your location, please ensure that you have enough supplies to last at least three days. As I said, driving through flood water seems to continue, even though we constantly urge community not to do so. Police and emergency services have to continue to put themselves at risk to assist people who do drive through floodwaters. Cars don't float for very long and they end up causing serious risk to people in them and can potentially cause uh, loss of life. So please listen to the warnings and don't drive through flood water. A particular message for campers and those visiting or fishing along uh, rivers, tents and uh, rivers, streams and creeks uh, there is risk of flash flood and there's also the risk of falling trees and limbs. So again, we ask campers to be really mindful of their surroundings and know the risks when they're there. Finally, finally, I'd like to conclude by thanking all of the agencies and volunteers for their brilliant ongoing support to assisting community during their time of need. Their tireless work helps keep the community safe and they've been working around the clock. So. Again, I really want to thank our agency personnel and volunteers for their great work. I'll now hand, out, hand over to Michael from the Bureau. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we've seen significant rainfall across the state over the last 36 hours, especially over central parts around the Heathcote region, around 184 millimetres of rain falling in just 24 hours. At Reedsdale, we've seen 117 millimetres falling there. That's a, a daily record for any month with over 120 years of data. So significant rainfall there. Also at Bendigo, 92 millimetres falling in the 24 hours to 9am today. Another record there with over 90 years of data. We still have a significant tropical air mass across the state at the moment, bringing moderate to heavy falls to central 
and eastern parts of the state. So still a severe thunderstorm warning is out for the northeast for heavy and potentially intense rainfall and also a severe weather warning for parts of the east as well. The good news is that through the rest of this afternoon and into the evening, we are going to see that rain contracting to the east of the state and then clearing into the early hours of Tuesday. And so for Tuesday and pretty much the rest of the week, we'll just see some isolated shower and thunderstorm activity. So certainly not looking at uh, the heavy rainfall that we have seen over the last couple of days, but still a very humid and uh, unstable air mass over Victoria. Happy to take any questions. Um, how much rain, you mentioned before, how much rain has Rochester seen and um, Seymour in particular, I guess over the last 24 hours? Yeah, so in that area of Rochester, around 125 millimetres, so they've actually broken uh, their daily record there for any month, with records going back uh, over 120 years, so significant rainfall totals in that region. And is that that's right. So Seymour has experienced slightly lighter falls compared to Reedsdale. So totals are around the 70 to 80 millimetre mark. Bendigo, 92 millimetres. A lot of that actually fell in just a couple of hours uh, yesterday. So it did result in significant flash flooding in that region. And you mentioned it's going to ease off this afternoon given a time when it might, I guess, reprieve for residents there trying to you know, get out of their homes. Yeah, so through central parts of the state, we'll see that easing just in the next couple of hours. But for eastern Victoria, it won't be until around 8pm this evening that we see that activity really starting to uh, ease and contract uh, eastwards into, into New South Wales and over the Tasman Sea. And is there any indication of, Mark, I guess, um, rain again in the next few days to even, I guess, make that even worse for residents there? Good news is that we're not expecting widespread rainfall over the next few days. So some isolated shower and thunderstorm activity, it could produce locally falls of 10 to 20 millimetres, but certainly not the widespread 50 to 100 or even 150 millimetres that we've seen over the last 24 to 36 hours. And just one more, just on Rochester, you might not know, but compared to the, I guess, floods from 2002, how does that compare to what we're seeing now? Uh, compared to 22, uh, 2022, I don't think it's quite as bad, but uh, Tim Weebush will be able to give uh, more information on that. Good afternoon, everyone. As you've just heard, we've seen a very significant uh, weather event impact across the northern parts of Victoria, but widespread rainfall in other parts of Victoria, including Melbourne as well. Since seven o'clock on Sunday morning, SES volunteers have responded to just over 1,200 requests for assistance. Unfortunately, 38 of those have related to flood rescues. And in the majority of cases, it's people taking their lives in their own hands and attempting to drive through flash flood waters. We cannot emphasise enough, do not attempt to drive through flash flood waters. It could be the last decision you make. Um, of those, 16 of those flood rescues occurred up around the Bendigo area um, to the north overnight last night. We saw eight of those around Gornong, um, four of those at Heathcote, two at Lockwood and two at Woodvale. Again, emergency services, both um, Water Police, SES volunteers and CFA did a fantastic effort in bringing each of those people to safety, but in each instance were putting their own lives at risk in being able to rescue those people. The focus will shift in the next few hours from being on flash flooding to river rain flooding. And I'm now going to go through what each of the main river catchments are going to uh, see over the next 24 to 72 hours in particular. In the northeast of the state, we're going to see a range of minor to major flooding occurring on those river systems. An emergency warning for an evacuate immediately is now in place for the Seymour community and in particular for those that are immediately around the Goulburn River at the Seymour Township. This is, flooding has occurred as a result of local tributaries um, in that area, rather than outflows from Lake Ilden. So in this case, we're asking residents to evacuate now. There are 50 homes that are immediately at risk of seeing overflow flooding, and around another 140 properties that could see um, flooding below the floor level, but isolating and also being cut off by the roads. 
So for up to those 200 properties, we're asking people to evacuate now with that flooding peak around seven metres, expected to occur sometime later today. On the Goulburn River, further upstream towards Lake Hilden, we are seeing now moderate flooding occurring, particularly around Yay. There are two emergency warnings for evacuate immediately for different parts of the Yay Township in those low-lying areas. Those areas, again, have been door knocked uh, earlier today by emergency services. And again, we can't emphasise enough where we have an evacuation message in place that is saying it is time to leave. Minor flooding is also now starting to occur on the Golden River further down towards Murchison. And assessments are now being made for the likes of Kyella, Marupna and Shepparton, where we are likely to see moderate flooding, if not higher, in the coming days in that area. A watch and act is also out for the King River and the 15 Mile Creek in the King Valley. Um, and again, communities around Greta South can expect to see that moderate flood levels over these coming days. And we are also likely to see Wangaratta come under risk of flooding in the coming days, and that is still being assessed. I'm now going to move across to the Lodden Mallee catchments, um, in particular the Campaspe River catchment. And as you've just heard, we saw significant rainfall over that catchment overnight. And as a result, the rivers and tributaries are now starting to respond. The Campaspe River downstream of Lake Epilock um, is already now at major flood level. Um, and we're now going to see that move further down the river system towards uh, Rochester later today and through Tuesday. In particular, we're likely to see the Rochester Township see moderate flooding later this afternoon. And then in the early hours of um, Tuesday morning, we will start to see that major flood level being reached at around 114.5 metres. We are expecting by mid-morning on Tuesday that the Rochester Township will reach 114.8 metres is the current model forecast by the Bureau of Meteorology. That's about a metre lower than what we saw in the 2022 floods. Um, this will still have a significant impact though for that community. There are around 35 properties that are likely to see above floor flooding. And there could be up to 250 other properties that will see overland flooding on their properties during this event. These are all properties that were affected during the 2022 floods, but again, we are seeing a level quite different to what we saw in that 2022 flood situation. The potential risk on the Campaspe down into Echuca uh, is still being assessed by the Bureau of Meteorology um, at the moment, but we are expecting to see flooding in and around Echuca in the coming days. Finally, in the Lodden Mallee catchments, there's also a minor flood warning out for the Lodden and Avoca river systems. Um, and in those communities with the rainfall that we've just seen, we can expect to see um, minor flooding being extended in those catchments for a number of days. And finally, across the metropolitan Melbourne catchments, there's now a number of minor flood warnings out um, in our communities. And this means the likes of bike paths and local roads will be impacted by those floodwaters. In particular, we're looking at the Maribyrnong in the upper reaches around Deep Creek that is currently at minor flood level. Similarly on the Yarra River between Yarra Glen and Abbotsford, and also on the Bunyip River around the Carolyn Ford. Again, for those communities, please take heed of the warnings, stay away from the bike paths and walking parks um, over these next couple of days. As you heard from the Commissioner earlier, um, if you're holidaying in some parts of Victoria that you are not normally stayed in before, or you may have even stayed there many times before, now is the time to know your flood risk. Go to the SES website at ses.vic.gov.au and download your local flood guide so that you can understand what those risks are as warnings are issued. Make sure you have the Vic Emergency app downloaded on your device so that you can get timely information about what is occurring in your locality at this time. If you are camping along rivers and streams, we still have a severe thunderstorm warning out this afternoon for the northeast of the state. If you're expecting heavy rainfall around those rivers and streams, now's the time to pack up and move away from the rivers and streams. Don't wait for a warning to be issued. And again, sandbag collection points are also available in a number of these at-risk communities, including the likes of Rochester this afternoon, um, where people can go to the SES website at ses.vic.gov.au to find where they can collect their um, sandbags for this situation. Again, if you're in need of emergency 
flood and storm assistance, you can contact the SES on 132 500. But again, if it is a life-threatening emergency, um, you can contact 000. Finally, we've said it a number of times during this um, media conference and other media conferences in recent days, flood water and driving through flood water is the single largest um, number of fatalities that we see in Australia as a result of natural hazards. So we can't emphasise enough, do not attempt to drive through flood waters. It could be the last decision you make. Happy to take questions. We don't have any exact numbers at this point in time around um, impacted properties. We do know just north of Bendigo around Gornong uh, and some of the localities uh, where we've seen flash flooding that there are properties that have been impacted, but impact assessments are still being undertaken by emergency services as we're very much in the response phase. Look, at this stage, we're only seeing small numbers at relief centres, but we are expecting as these evacuate immediately warnings come out that we will see increases in numbers there. Um, again, people need to have a plan. Um, make sure that you know where you're going to go. Um, do you have family and friends? Do you have an alternate route if you come across a road that is cut by floodwaters so that you're not taking the risk of attempting to drive through them? Look, we know through our contacts in Parks Victoria and also Forest Fire Management Victoria that they've been doing a lot of patrols in the um, camping areas. And the good news is a lot of campers have been packing up and relocating, if not returning back home, um, as a result of the severe weather that we're seeing. Look, our advice is it only takes 15 centimetres for a small car to float in floodwaters. That's the height of an average pen. Even for a standard size sedan, 30 centimetres of water is all it can take for, a, for that type of vehicle to float. And for a four-wheel drive, 45 centimetres is all that it requires, an A4 sheet of paper height, um, for your four-wheel drive to be floating. So again, if you come across floodwaters across the road, turn around and find an alternate route. Yes, we've got excellent take up by our SES volunteers right across the state in responding to this emergency, but they're being supported by a range of other agencies. The CFA are out there in significant numbers, Forest Fire Management Victoria. We've also got the likes of Red Cross supporting relief centres. Um, so we're seeing a terrific effort by our volunteer agencies, both volunteer and also career staff. Do you know how many crews are out there at the moment? I don't have exact numbers at this time. And I'll pass back to the Commissioner for questions. Uh, thanks, Tim. So thanks to my colleagues and a special thanks also to all of the workers we have here at the State Control Centre and particularly those on the ground, our volunteers and agencies that are working round the clock to keep the community safe. They're doing a fantastic job, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. I'm happy to take any follow-up questions that you may still have. I guess what do you expect over the next 24 hours? How do you expect, I guess, the waters um, rise and yeah, I think as you've heard from um, Tim and Michael, we'll continue to get rain. Some of those rivers, tributaries, creeks will continue to rise. Others are already receding, so that rain will continue to move. The risk areas have, have been outlined, like currently we have Rochester and Seymour, particularly with, with some parts of Yay on, on flood alert and people being evacuated from those areas. We'll continue to work with community. We'll continue to engage with community, listen to community and support community. We have uh, fantastic people that are working round the clock to keep them safe. They are positioned right across the state in all towns and locations, from incident control centres to the regional control centres. So I expect we'll, we'll continue to see a bit more of that. There will be some impacts from the floods. Um, there will be. How much is really hard to say. It's an imperfect science around forecasting. Sometimes you get more than is forecast, sometimes less, but we're prepared for whichever way it is. Can you, do you expect any other communities well, there's, there is the risk of um, the, well, the rains will continue as it moves east across the state, both at northeast and also eastern um, Gippsland. They're not forecasting that amount of rain there, but again, it's very hard to tell. Sometimes you get storms that can occur that can um, 
can impact on local towns and we'll respond to that if it does. The towns that have been outlined, Seymour, uh, Rochester, Wangaratta, Shepparton, uh, those areas will likely be impacted. Uh, and to what degree, um, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, the forecast is there, the warnings are there, the alerts are there. We ask the community to take notice of those, listen and act early. Absolutely, be on alert. Again, um, listen to the listen to your broadcasters, have a look at the apps. Most people who live in these areas know whether they live in a, a flood prone area. They know the heights, they know the levels. They're, they're in tune with that, but at this time of the year we have a lot of people on holidays. Those people on holidays may not know the risks in those areas, so we ask those people particularly, log on, have a look at the SES site, have a look at the area, what the, the flood risk is, and then prepare accordingly. Do you expect any more late to be opened, or are those um, th there may be depending on what occurs, but for the most part I expect that they, they will be the ones. Depending on what does occur at Wangaratta, for example, uh, and Shepparton. Um, so, you know, it is a bit of wait and see. We don't stand, not stand them up until we're absolutely aware of what that risk is, so we'll wait and see. And just with that, I think it's the Maribyrnong River as well, so I guess it's just people to be aware of those yeah. and not what like Yeah, the Maribyrnong River is likely to remain at minor and, and then drop down from that. So that's not as much of a risk, but again, just stay in touch. Um, monitor the ads, listen to your radio, listen to the warnings. Thanks very much. Thanks.